Synology designed the B-Station to be a simple way to create your own private storage cloud. But if you prefer to access your B-Station directly from your home network, you can also set it up to act like a traditional file server. Before we start, it's worth noting that the file server functions on a B-Station are very basic and will limit you to a default set of network shares consisting of three folders. Also due to the way the B-Station has been designed, you will not be able to set access permissions over these three folders and you will be limited to only being allowed to create eight user accounts. In order to use our B-Station as a local file server, we first need to sign into the My B-Station web portal where we will find our B-Station. If we now click on the settings icon and from the drop down menu choose system settings. When system settings loads, we will need to use the sidebar and choose the option advanced settings. From within advanced settings, we now need to click on local access where we will find two options that we need to enable. The first is local account, which when we enable it will ask us to create a local user account. However, there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. First, the local user account is only used to access our B-Station from our home network. So the settings that we use to access our B-Station remotely will stay the same. It's also worth noting that if you create a local user account using the same username and password that you use to sign into your Windows computer, when you try and access your B-Station network shares, you will not be prompted for any sign-in credentials. After clicking Save, we're issued with a warning that any connections to our B-Station will be interrupted in order for the new local user account to be created. When we click Continue, our B-Station will return us to the web portal. Let's once again return to System Settings and then Access Advanced Settings, Local Access. As you can see, we now have a local account and we are shown the local IP address that we need to use in order to access our network shares. If you have not assigned your B-Station with a static IP address, we recommend that you do, as you don't want to have to continually check what IP address your B-Station is using. Let's now enable SMB service so that a computer on our home network can browse for and access the network shares on our B-Station. First, we're issued with a warning that we need to avoid uploading large numbers of photos through our network shares, as this will affect the performance of our B-Station. After ticking Got It, and then clicking on Continue, our B-Station will become accessible via the SMB protocol, which will then allow us to access predefined network shares that already exist on our B-Station. With SMB service now activated, we're provided with basic information that can help us to connect either a Windows or Apple Macintosh computer to our network shares. We also have something called Workgroup, which was an attempt by Microsoft to create a simple way to allow Windows computers to share files or network resources. However, as modern computers don't really bother with Workgroups anymore, we're going to ignore this setting. With our B-Station now configured for local file sharing, Let's check that we can access our network shares from within Windows and Mac OS. On Windows, there are numerous ways that we can access the network shares on our B-Station. The first is from within search. So if we type backslash backslash, then enter the name of our B-Station or type its IP address. When we press enter on our keyboard, we will be presented with our network shares or be prompted for a username and password. If you are prompted for a username and password, simply enter the local account credentials you just created on your B-Station. The reason we have not been prompted for signing credentials is because the user account on our computer matches the local user account credentials that we just created on our B-Station. We can also access our network shares through File Explorer. So if we locate and click the address bar, then once again type backslash backslash and the name of our B-Station or its IP address. When we press enter, our network shares will be displayed. Finally, if we're not sure what our B-Station is called, we can browse our home network for our network shares. 
if we locate network from the sidebar of File Explorer, we should see listed our B station. When we click on it, we will then be presented with our network shares. On Mac OS, if from the menu bar of Finder, we select Go, then choose the option Connect to Server. Now in the provided space, if we type SMB colon forward slash forward slash, then either the name of our B station or its IP address. When we click Connect, we will be shown a list of our network shares. You might find that your computer prompts you to enter access credentials. If this is the case, you will need to enter the local account credentials that you created on your B station. If we highlight a network share and click OK, that network share will open on our computer. An alternative method for accessing your network shares is via Finder. So if we open Finder, and in the sidebar under the heading Locations, choose Network, we should find listed the devices connected to our home network along with our B station. If we now double click on our B station, we should then see a list of our network shares. Let's take a closer look at all of the default network shares that our B station uses. As you can see, we've only got three network shares that we can access, and there's no way to create any more network shares on our B station. However, there is a workaround. If we add an external USB hard drive to our B station, it will automatically create a new network share for that drive. So we're going to take a closer look at how we create that share in a moment. The home share contains five subfolders that relate to where your data is stored when you use the bfile and bphoto applications. The cloud services folder is where files and folders are stored if you configure your B station to sync with cloud services like Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox. As you can have your B station create sync points or folder backups for individual computers, the computer's folder is where your B station stores that data. Files is where you will find the files and folders that are automatically synced across devices that use the My Files feature on your B station. The Photos folder is where the BPhotos app will save your photo files. So by copying files into this folder, you can quickly transfer photos into the BPhotos app. While not well documented, there is a feature that allows you to plug a USB drive into your B station so that you can back up the contents of that drive. So the USB backup folder is simply a way to allow you to then access the data that you've backed up to your B station. The Media Network Share is where you save audio and video files that you want to share. However, on models of BStation that are able to run Plex, this is also where you need to save your media files. Finally, we have the Time Machine folder, which is really just a folder for Apple Macintosh users in order to allow them to make a network backup of their computer using the Time Machine application. As we previously mentioned, on a Synology B station, you can't create your own network shares. However, if you connect an external USB hard drive to your B station, your B station will make that drive a network share point in order for you to more easily access the contents of that drive. Let's take a look by first connecting an external USB hard drive to our B station and then returning to the My B station web portal. This time, if we open B files, and from the sidebar, click on External Drives. We will see the drive that we've just connected to our B station. This drive can now be used either as secondary storage or to back up the contents of our B station. If we return to our computer and once again connect to our network shares, we can now see that our USB drive has been added as a local network share. Finally, as a reminder, don't forget that we now have two ways to sign into our BStation when using the BStation web portal. So if we're working remotely from our home network and need to sign into the BStation web portal, 
we need to use our Synology account details. However, if we're working from home and need to sign into our BStation, at the web portal sign in page, we can use the local account that we just created on our BStation. To summarize, in this video, we took a look at how you set up local access to network shares on a Synology BStation. We did this by first enabling and creating a local account, and then by switching on our BStation's SMB service. We then did a demonstration as to how from within Windows and Mac OS, you can access the default network shares on a BStation before explaining what each of the network shares actually does. We then finished up by showing you the only way you can create your own custom network share, which is done by plugging an external USB hard drive into your BStation.